That in addition to what you are doing, of course, but treat them through sadaqa. Give sadaqa and consider that to be part of your regimen seeking the cure to your sickness. There is nothing quicker in being answered by Allah than sadaqa. So it is something which is immediately answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the answer here, of course, is not to the sadaqa itself, but because when we give sadaqa, usually we have some haja that we are asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It might be a sickness, it might be something that we are worried about, or at the very least, we are asking Allah for forgiveness of our sins, we are asking Him for His tawfiq and His blessings. So whatever hajat we have, whatever dua we have with the sadaqah, then there is nothing that is going to be answered quickly than that hajat or that prayer. And there is nothing that is more quick in giving benefit and more beneficial to a person who is sick than sadaqah. So we mentioned that Islam encourages medical treatment. It also encourages dua, as we mentioned. And now a third thing that Islam says that we should always consider part of our treatment, part of our regimen, in fact, part of our regular way of maintaining our health, if we look at it more broadly, is to give sadaqa. And whenever we have a dua or an important hajat to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should do so alongside sadaqa. Another hadith that we have is from our fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad Baqir alayhi salatu was salam. The Imam was asked by one of his companions, tell me something that will benefit me. What can I do to increase in my piety, my nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be a better person? And the Imam replied, Ya Aba Ubaidah, akthir dhikr al-mawt. Fa innahu lam yukthir insanun dhikr al-mawt illa zahida fi dunya That if you want to improve your self as a person, then remember death frequently. Because there is nobody who remembers death frequently except that they are able to turn their heart away from the temptations of this world more successfully. And being able to turn your heart away from the temptations of this world, it does not take the meaning away from life, but it gives greater meaning to life because we are not fleeing from our eventual death or fleeing from our mortality and we don't have anything to fear anymore. So the good things that come into our life, they actually have more meaning. The blessings that Allah gives us, they are more significant. And then if Allah changes our circumstances when we go through tests, then it will not cause us pain or suffering. So the Imam says that frequently remember death. And in another hadith, this has been explained, that whenever you are sick, whenever you are ill, at that moment, it is especially beneficial for a person to think of their state after death. Because when we are sick, when we are vulnerable, when we feel our own weakness, that is sometimes the best time for us to remind ourselves that we are always vulnerable. And even if I feel healthy, but sickness is only an instant away. It's never something that we can ever be fully confident is beyond us or is past us. So this is something which the Imams would advise their companions to remember. However, remembering death, and remembering death especially in the course of sickness, should not come with worry or unease. It should be done in a way to remind ourselves of our eventual destination in life. This is where we are going. And when we realize this is where we are going, but it is not a random event. It's not that it's going to happen to us and we don't have any control over it. It is something that is going to happen to us under the care and under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is, as he himself says, more merciful for each person or towards each person than their own parents. So it should not cause us jaza or unease or a loss of patience. There is an incident narrated uh, that in the time of Imam Ja'far Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam, a person had a child who passed away. Now this is something which, as I've mentioned in some of my talks, 
happened more than once to Imam Sadiq himself, that some of his children passed away in his own lifetime. When this person, presumably in the city of Medina, when their child passed away, they had a great deal of grief and they lost their patience. And so the Imam said that you have jazirta lil musibat al sughra wa ghafalta an al musibat al kubra. That you have lost your patience over a smaller trial and you have forgotten or lost sight of the greater calamity or the greater trial. If you were ready yourself for the destination that your son or your daughter has gone to, you would not be unable to get a grip on your own grief. If you had made yourself ready for the fact that you are going to leave this world, then yes, your heart would have been grieved, but you would have been able to control yourself and you would have been able to deal with that grief constructively. So which of the two now is the greater tragedy and which of the two is the greater calamity? The Imam says that your calamity at not having prepared for the hereafter is a far greater danger to yourself and a far worse thing than the calamity that has been fallen you by your child dying at a young age. And the Imam says that this is something that you should prepare for. And yes, it is something that helps us deal with the eventuality of death, our own death, the loss of our relatives, and also with any other trial that we might face within life. If we have prepared for death, and we can never say that we have settled all of our accounts, and that we have done our obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will always be in debt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something which we can never avoid. But if we are in the process of preparing for death and we are readying ourselves and this is something that we think about and we prepare for, even if we will never settle our debts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that we will be able to deal with hardships and we will be able to deal with grief positively in our lives. And of course, we will be more worthy of Allah's mercy and His forgiveness in the hereafter. So these are a few ahadith that talk about the preparation for death and about the uh, role of death in our spiritual advancement and development. And there are a few other hadith that we will also look at, inshallah. There's one hadith that I wanted to speak about, which is a hadith from the uh, third Imam, Imam Sayyid al Shuhada Hussain ibn Ali alayhi salatu was salam. which he reports from the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And in this hadith, the Prophet speaks of the path that the Ummah will take through history. There are some ahadith in which the Prophet talks about what is going to happen after his time. And these ahadith are especially important because they shed light on how it is that Muslims can improve our state, how it is that we can restore the piety and the sincerity that characterized Islam in the early days. It is not a return to the past. And unfortunately, there are some very simplistic groups that think that the way to return Islam to glory is to deny the changes that have taken place, in some cases advancements, in other cases, there may be advancements that are not really advancements. But whatever it might be, there is change that takes place in human society. Some groups, they assume or they teach that the way to solve the problems of Islam are to go back to simpler times. And that is not true. It is not possible and it is not desirable to turn back the clock. That is not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us. But the Prophet does provide guidance about what kinds of things led to the flourishing of Islam in the days when it was flourishing and what are the causes 
that will prevent Islam